What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a location walkthrough to find two very unique weapons. And they're actually twin weapons that are supposed to be used together. The ruin we're at right now, which I'll show you on the map in a second because it's so foggy, you literally can't see anything but Lydia's beautiful face. Valenrude, that's how you say it, I'm pretty sure now I've seen the lettering. White Run is just down here, so it's something you can come and get very early on in the game, and I especially suggest doing this if you're using a dual wielding character, because these weapons are intended to be used together. But you don't have to use them together, it just fits their backstory better. So the ruin is located just here on the map, and there's also a secret mini boss in this dungeon as well, which I'm pretty excited to show you guys. It's a pretty short walk from White Run. You can actually see White Run just over there if the mist clears a little bit in the distance at the foot of High Hrothgar. Right, let us venture inwards into this foreboding dungeon. It's actually quite a cool dungeon because of the way it's designed. But before we go down these steps, guys, there's actually a, a chest just tucked away down the side here that I don't want you guys to miss. So let's quickly grab this. Uh, not too bad, 50 gold and a stamina potion. And there's a burial urn as well. There's actually a quest you can do that makes you find lots of gems and extra gold in burial urns. Uh, it's an extremely long quest, probably one of the most time-consuming quests in the game, uh, which you'll probably never do. But I will leave a link to my guide on how to do that quest in the description. I love all these new graphics mods I've got installed. If you guys want a video on how to install all of these graphics mods, um, I've made a, like a very, very beginner-friendly tutorial on exactly how to do that. And I'll link that below in the description as well if you guys are interested. Okay, so here we are. We've just entered the dungeon. I haven't been here for a while. My god, this guy has been absolutely wrecked with a knife through the skull. What's happened here? There is a journal. Hedix journal, in fact. Let's have a read. So we've started a quest. Silenced Tongue. Locate the ceremonial weapons. This is actually a really cool mechanic that exists in this dungeon that I'll show you in a minute. But let's read the backstory here. I was skeptical, but it's obvious now. The old hymns had truths to them. The relief wasn't far from the entrance, just as they said. I've no doubt now that it hides the entrance to Venel's tomb. He is actually the mini boss I'm talking about. And he's going to be quite a difficult boss fight if you're a low level, so do bear that in mind. The two keys must be hidden somewhere nearby. Ceremonial replicas of Okin and Edgy, the two unique weapons we're going to find. Favoured weapons when Quenel went into battle. I'm sorry I'm dyslexic so I'm butchering all these pronunciations. I don't dare explore further without hiring bodyguards to accompany me. However, the tongue chief in Quenel would be entombed behind just a few feet of stone. The ancestor we scarcely believed was real. Twice down for planning this foolish scouting trip, I should have hired those cell swords in the first place. Perhaps there was no need. This place is just a tomb after all, and there are no obvious signs of habitation. It isn't as though the thousand year dead will mind if I have a look around. And then this journal is just like splattered with blood. There's an ancient Nordic sword here. Looks like an ancient Nordic battle axe, so clearly... This guy had a run-in with the undead. Jesus Christ. I did not expect that at all. <laughs> he just sat up at like the perfect moment I was looking at him. Jesus, Lydia, we need to keep our wits about us in this dungeon. So if we come through into the main room, you'll see there's a, a way to the left here and a way to the right. And there's also what we spoke about in the journal just then, which is this tomb with a giant door here. A unique door with a unique mechanic, which basically means we have to, you lack the required item. Find these ceremonial weapons, Okin and Edu or whatever you call them, and place them in there. And I assume that's gonna open the door for us. Now there is an elven shield here, which is pretty helpful for Lydia, but it's light armor. So I'm gonna leave her with a heavy armored shield because she is more effective at using that heavy armor. So we have a choice, uh, we can either go left or right. Before we go left, I'm going to go first. Um, there is a little room here that you can go inside with a door. Now, depending if you've done the Dark Brotherhood, you will have like a little meeting here later on. Yes. And there's a chest. I think there will be a chest here, but I can't remember, to be honest. 
So um, we're going to back out here. And I just wanted to quickly show you that in case you guys wondered what it was about. But um, we're going to go through this corridor just here to the left of that staircase. And I do believe there are going to be some Dragos. I don't know why I'm putting my bow away. Get Rex some. I am going to try and take these guys out early. He's definitely just a dead body. Before we have any issues dealing with them. Just to make our life a little bit easier. We are playing on expert difficulty. Just so you guys know if you're wondering. But obviously the sneak attacks in this game do extreme amounts of damage. Booty shot! He did not like that slap to the booty at all. Look at this one-eyed mongrel. Looks a bit like a white walker from Game of Thrones. Oh, Lydia, what have you done? Oh god, there's actually- I missed one. Lydia's getting beaten up. Let's let Lydia destroy this Draga. Oh man, I don't even know how she killed him. I didn't even see an impact. Look at these new animations for sneaking guys. They look awesome. All the lighting and the cave textures, as you can see, they're like all 4K. What I've done to make modding super easy for people is develop something called a mod pack. And I worked with another YouTuber called Ultimate Immersion and we made this giant mod pack together which people can just download in the click of the button. And it installs everything in the correct order so you don't need to worry at all. I feel like instead of sneaking attack the boss man, we should actually go full on and try and kill him properly. Come on, let's do this man. I've got the uh, Shroud Armor Hat, which is going to help me out here. It gives me a, another 25% more bow damage. And then I get quite a lot of questions, because I think quite a lot of people haven't seen this armor I'm wearing. But it's the Ancient Falmer armor. It's not a mod. It's actually in the original game. No, do not shoot Lydia with that bow, sir. These guys absolutely wreck you if they hit you, so uh, do take care. He doesn't know what to do. He's got his uh, unique sword out, but... Um, I mean, Unique Axe. I think that's Unique Axe, or Enchanted. It doesn't look Enchanted, though, does it? We'll let Lydia finish him off. See, she doesn't do that much. Oh, my God. Watch out for all these pressure pads. I literally just saw them on the floor there. Oh, my goodness. That was close. Okay, right. Let's uh, loot his body. He's got an Orcish bow. Steel arrows. Oh, it's just a normal War Axe. And here we have Ceremonial Axe. Let's grab that. I wonder what actually happens if you stand on these. Oh, I can't stand on them because I've got the perk that stops me from... Uh... I don't actually know what happens, though. I can't remember. Oh, well, you guys can let me know in the comments section. So as you can see, this area of the dungeon is just, like, collapsed in on itself. So we've got to follow our footsteps back to the, uh, the tomb entrance. So let's quickly run back up here. Here we are. Okay, so... Oh, what the... Okay, I don't know what that was. That was a bit weird. Right, okay then. So if we just activate this side... Oh, no, we've got the axe. Okay, so it has put it in this sheath here. That looks so cool. But obviously, we've got to go to the other side now to get the sword. I recall this area side of the dungeon being a bit bigger, but honestly... I can't remember completely. Okay, we want to take out this guy first. Just because I feel like it. Get wrecked! Oh man, he's just survived that sneaker shot. Oh, okay. Okay, where's he going? Goodbye! Take a little trip down the stairs. Oh, look. Can't move. Can't hit a moving... Oh, the nut shot is real. Right, okay, let's go down here. Obviously, watch out for this um, big swinging door here. There's a pressure pad. We should be fine, but Lydia... Um, well, we'll just watch and see what happens here. Oh, God, that was so close, Lydia. You almost got the booty slap to end all booty slaps. Right, let's go upstairs, and it should just, like, ravel around and lead us... Oh, hello. This is the guy we do not want to face in combat. You see, that was a three-time sneak attack. So you can imagine how tanky this guy actually is. This bow does about 80 damage. So that's 180... That's 160... 240 damage. Because I am terrible at maths, apparently. 
Oh god, Lydia, a restless Draga is trying to mate with you. Quickly, get rid of that bad boy. Okay, we could jump down there and actually get the, uh, the Draga stuff, but we're going to leave that for now. Because there's actually an ancient Nordic helmet here, which is pretty cool. If you guys want to find a full set of ancient Nordic armor, I will put it in the description below so you can, uh, you can get that. It's actually the, one of the best armor sets you can get at a low level, so uh, it's definitely worth looking into. It's also really cool if you actually want to put it with this armor set. Now, I think... What the fuck is... Shit, Lydia! Jesus Christ! Oh, they're only, like, level one drugs. Okay, this guy's gonna be a bit more... Come out of the... Imp oh, no, you don't! Oh, yeah, Lydia, we're literally, like, just too over-leveled for this dungeon, I feel. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Ceremonial sword. Yeah, so the armor I was just telling you guys, like, is going to go really well with these two swords. If you have ancient Nordic armor, and then you also have the ancient Nordic swords as well, that's going to look really cool. That would be, like, quite a cool sort of themed lore build. And you come up with a cool backstory for it or something. I don't want to go this way. I want to, like, jump down on this ledge here. Because I need some arrows. Because we used quite a lot of them up when we went through previous dungeon in a live stream. Here he is. He fell down, didn't he? And then we can come down here. That goes back to the entrance. So this is where we need to go. And we need to go up these stairs again. We're basically retracing our steps back to the uh, where the ceremonial door is so we can open it now. And I do recommend saving the game because uh, some people have told me when I previously did a walkthrough on this location that it's very difficult. You guys might be wondering why I'm doing another walkthrough. It's because my old walkthrough was a super sped up version, which was three minutes long, and there was just text tutorials. Um, so it wasn't as good. Let's activate this door. And now the handles appear and drop down. Oh, that's really cool. I love it. So we can now open or activate this door and go inside. I'm going to have a sip of tea. That's good. Okay. After having a sip of tea, we can progress. I suggest you guys do the same. There's nothing like a cup of tea when exploring a drug or dungeon. Why? Was this someone's house? I'm so confused. Why is this here? Maybe it was. Like, it was just a burnt corpse praying next to this fire. I wonder what happened here. There's nothing really to give me a clue. I love things like this. There seems to be a lot of things like that in Fallout, actually, where you're just like, what on earth actually happened here? You walk on in the strangest scenes, and you're like, what does this even mean? Ah, oh, hello there, sir. He was just sitting down there chilling, waiting for me, wasn't he? Drago White. Look at him, he's got a fucking arrow for his face. Ah! Oh! That definitely should have missed, but apparently... Skyrim is very forgiving when it comes to my archery skills. So here we go. This is the boss man. Once again, guys, we're going to fight him properly, right? I'm actually going to need the slow time shout right here. Which I don't appear to have, actually. Let me have a quick look. Slow time. There we go. Here we go. We've only got level one, though. Okay, yeah, we're doing this properly. Come at me, bro. Kvenel, the tongue. He's going to lick you, lady. Oh, my God. He does a lot of damage. Jesus Christ, Lydia. I should have given Lydia some blimming health potions at this rate. Okay, we should really heal ourselves, but I'm too into killing him. See, the Draga Whites summon Frost Atronox, which are just going to absolutely destroy Lydia. Oh, my God. God, look at the damage we do to the Frost Atronaut. Can't even see its health bar get any lower. That is uh, not a good sign at all. I can't see anything in the slow time shot. Clearly, this is a graphical bug that I've um, put on to deem the shout completely useless to me. Oh, God, please. No, you don't know where I am. Please stop it, Frost Atronaut. Please. Oh, God. Where's that? Wait a second. I can trick you all. 
And now you cannot find me. I do not think so. Oh god, he's, he's found a secret way. Jesus Christ, we're going to release him from his tomb into Skyrim. Oh my god, please get away from me. Okay, this is going to kill me, this power attack. We kind of need to drink a potion right now. Potion of extra health to fortify our health. Oh, this is actually more powerful. Let's take this. Um, and now I need a health potion. But do I even have a health potion? Might as well use some potent poison to poison my weapon, though. Poison, poison, poison. There we go. Okay, great, great, great. Poison doesn't even work on him. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I even know how to play this game? Oh, God. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. We may have run out of potions, but I need some more stamina right now. Oh my god, the frost effect from these swords is really hurting. I really need to use like the unrelenting force shot, because like, right now, this guy... I think he might resist it, actually, because he's a ghost, but I'll try it. There's a guy right behind me, I know there is. Oh, where is he? Oh, that's Lydia! Okay, okay, we're good. What is that, Lydia? What is going on behind us? Please take care of this. Oh, there's a mage! Oh, don't summon another Frost Atronaut. Please get out of here. Lydia, we need to kill this mage. He's very problematic. So ideally, if I was going to do this the easy way, I would sneak... I'd sit there, wait until all the Draga came out of their tombs, and then I would sneak attack the mage to make sure he was dead so he could not summon the Frost Atronaut like so. And that would be a lot easier. Genuinely, I don't know what happens to this guy. I think he's actually got lost. Here he is. He's genuinely lost. He's like, I don't know the way out of my own tomb. Oh, no, no, he's around the corner. I was so confused then. Apparently, Lydia's somehow got to him. We're actually going to be able to kill him right now. This is good. We can't stagger him because he's in this ghost form. So he's like super powerful and hard to kill. No, get out of my way. I want to search his ghostly remains. He's got 250 go gold. Good. Who the hell am I? Why am I speaking so poshly? Okin. Targets take 10 points of frost damage to health and stamina. Very cool. You can put this on one of those trophies where it's like both swords and the axe are like together crossed over on the weapon rack. Uh, target takes 10 points of frost damage to health and stamina. So... They're pretty awesome at a low level, but they're not le they're not leveled unique items. So if you find them when you're level 60 or 80, they're still going to be the same enchantment, which is why I recommend getting them very early on at the start of the game because they're pretty fun to use. You can also upgrade them though, so you can upgrade the damage to like 200 damage or something. I've got a video linked in the description exactly how to do that if you guys are set on using these weapons. You read, I'll follow. But um. Let's go back into the tomb, because there's lots of treasure we actually need to pick up now. And there's also a word wall, which you guys probably spotted earlier. I do like it when the uh, fights are a little bit harder, though. Oh, there was an elixir of truce shot there. That would have been uh, so helpful for me. Right, let's search this chest. 300 gold. Knight falls on Sentinel. This is actually a skill book. Can't remember what for, though. Maybe two-handed. Oh, glass sword. We can give that to Lydia. Um, potion of light feet. That would have been... Potion of invisibility as well. That would have also been really useful. Excuse me, sword. I really want this. Okay, so this is pretty much the whole area. We got the boss chest. Now we need to go to the word wall. Here we are. What shout will it be? I don't actually remember. Seek aura whisper. Ah, I think this is a shout you can use in the distance and then enemies will run over there to go and check out what that noise was so it's actually a very useful shout for a sneaky character extremely useful in fact so this time instead of jumping down here which is what i did earlier we're gonna run down here and there's another chest 18 gold that's pitiful oh there's actually a dragon priest dagger here let me know in the comments if that's there for you guys dragon priest daggers just look awesome Ah, a minor maze, Shalador and Labyrinthian. This is a really cool book because this actually exists in the game. This is actually a map of the maze 
It's a very, very secret location. I did a video about it ages ago, which I'll also link in the description. My God, all this self-advertisement. -adver Sorry, guys, but that's how you get successful on YouTube by telling people that you have already made a guide on something. Otherwise, they'll say, have you done a guide on this here? So, okay, so this is a dead end, but um, definitely check out that location. It's one of my favorite locations in the game. And a lot of people seem to miss it. I don't understand why. There's another secret chest just over here, guys. So in order to get that, just jump over. Don't need to use the whirlwind sprint shout. And we can grab this as well. Look at Lydia. She's conducting some kind of ritual. My god, that must be painful, Lydia. So once you're finished, guys, literally just exit the dungeon. Follow your footsteps back the way you came. And you'll find yourself out again in the beautiful, wondrous land of Skyrim. Now, guys, I want to ask your help on something because basically you... Oh, my God, there is a deer here. Wait a second. Wait just a moment. Oh, booty shot. Okay, now I can speak to you guys. So basically, guys, I want to ask your help on some... Because I finally figured out and confirmed that YouTube does not notify people even if you press the notification button on my channel. Basically, it used to be like a double subscribe thing, so... If I release a new video, YouTube will tell you that I've released a new video and it would say, okay, go and check it out. But now it doesn't do that. And I've tested this out with lots of people and it only works for about 50% of them. And it's like, you know, there's no point in getting notifications really anymore. It kind of helps. It's better than not having them, but it, it just doesn't really work. It's not reliable. And also with my videos being demonetized constantly, I've got to look for a more reliable way of supporting myself besides just Patreon. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to make an emailing list. And I've looked into ways of doing this, but if you guys want to sign up to the emailing list, there'll be a link near the top of the description. And just type in your email and give it to me. But there are only a certain number of places on this emailing list. Um, because I can't, aff like, you have to, like, subscribe to the service. For example, if I want to have 5,000 people in my emailing list, it's going to cost me... $40 or so a month uh, so, like so I I've got to be able to afford to make a bigger emailing list but I can't afford to do that so there's only like you know so if you want to get notifications to my videos definitely sign up as soon as possible but only a certain number of people will be able to get those notifications because I can't afford to like ha let you all have them um, basically it's going to be first come first serve Sorry that I can't give this service to everyone, but sign up and I'll let you know when it becomes a problem. I'll, I mean, I'll just try and upgrade it anyway when it, when it reaches like the cap limit. But um, it's definitely something I need to sort of figure out. My videos are being, still being demonetized. Uh, and worryingly, I actually found out that some videos, well, any video that is demonetized, um, I submit a manual review and someone comes along and then re-monetizes it. Uh, this happens with every single video I upload, by the way. Uh, but they're always re-monetized and someone says, oh, okay, that's actually fine. Sorry, we messed up again. God, that is making me dizzy. But the issue is, is that even though these videos are re-monetized so they can earn money again, they're actually then permanently tagged with a code that stops suggesting them to other people. So what I've noticed, like looking back through my channel, is that Videos that haven't been demonetized ever have performed a lot better in like the amount of people that have viewed them than videos that have been demonetized once before. And this isn't anything to do with my content not being okay because they manually review it and say actually it is okay. So it's kind of just penalizing my channel at the moment and that really has massively affected my income. It's worse than what I thought it was. So I just thought I'd put this at the end of the video to let you guys know uh, the situation. Oh, look, the clouds are cleared. We can see white run. That's cool. Um, a lot of people are supporting me on Patreon. It's um, it's enough to pay the rent each month, um, which I really appreciate. But my initial plan was for Patreon that I wanted to use the money to go to events, to reinvest in the channel. And that's what I had previously been using it for. But now it's kind of like I'm more relying on it to sort of live off as well. So, um, 
it, it's good to have that buffer to support me. So I really do appreciate those of you that support me on Patreon. Thanks very much for that, guys. It means a lot to me, seriously. Uh, but thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys found it interesting. You enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, you can also follow me on Facebook as well if you guys are interested. Uh, the link's always been in the description. Just like the Facebook page. That's another way you can get notifications if you want to keep up to date instead of emails or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to like make it as easy for, as possible. Is If you want to get notified, you do get notified. That's black as white as it is, really. But um, unfortunately, I can't rely on YouTube to do that for me. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.